So the lower heating element in our electric water heater has uh, gone out. Uh, I knew it was coming. These things make a, a popping, sizzling, crunching, boiling sound when they're starting to go because there's an arc that uh, develops uh, between two broken segments of the uh, element. Uh, while it's on. I've already replaced the uh, upper element. That one uh, went out about a year ago. Uh, and so I picked up a second one because I knew that one was going to be going soon too. So I've just had this uh, sitting around waiting for the right time and this is it. Our water heater is currently not working um, because it keeps tripping the circuit breaker every time it comes on because of that uh, problem down there so uh, the bad part about this is I've got to drain it first um, it needs to be drained and that's going to take a couple hours to drain all the way down to the uh, to below the lower element so go ahead and uh, break out the garden hose run it out to the street and start draining this guy all right so I've got the hose connected Go ahead and uh, cut off the cold water supply. <laughs> nice and tight. <clears throat> Open up this drain valve. I'm going to open up the TMP valve to get some uh, uh, place for the air to come back in. I could also open up a couple hot water taps inside the house. It would save the, serve the same purpose. Got a little leak here. Okay, no big deal. Put a towel or something down there and that should uh, should collect most of that. So as you can see, this does drain very slowly. So it's probably going to be a couple hours. For that to fully drain. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the power is off to the water heater. So that leak turned out to be a little bit bigger than I expected, <laughs> as you can see. So I put this little uh, tray here. I think it's mostly empty now anyway. It's uh, definitely a lot lighter. Um, so then now, now that I've got the power off, I'll go ahead and open up the uh, open up these cover plates. I don't have to open up the top cover plate in order to change the lower element. But while I'm uh, working on the water heater anyway, I'll just go ahead and take a peek at it and make sure that everything is still okay up here. Make sure all the wires are still tight and uh, that this element isn't leaking or anything like that. Uh, no trace of water, so that's good. I'll cover this back up. <clears throat> that 
plate's a little wet now. It fell in the puddle, so set that aside for now. Put that back on when it dries. Now I'm just going to double check that there is indeed no voltage going to the water heater. So I've got my little uh, voltage detector here. I'm going to first try this out on voltage that I know is live. That way I can be sure that it's working and I won't get a false negative reading. And we're good. So now I'll go ahead and take off this lower cover. This is the element I'm going to be changing out. Still a fair bit of water in there. Remove this fiberglass batting. Set that aside. <clears throat> so the first thing I have to do is remove this protective cover. And that exposes the heating element. So I'll go ahead and disconnect the wires. Water's mostly drained. Um, it appears to be below the level of this uh, element here. Uh, if not, if not, we'll find out pretty quickly. Um, but it's okay. The water will drain out and out of the frame if there is any left. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen this up. careful and gentle with this because if it's badly damaged I do not want pieces to fall off of it because that'll just be a very very big mess to fish out piece. As you can see, there's the point of failure right there. Just uh, burst wide open. It was cooking itself away. So, go ahead and get this replaced and uh, and we'll be good. I do want to clean up the edge of this hole here. As you can see there's a lot of uh, a lot of calcium buildup in there. So I want to clean that out the best I can so that we don't have a leak in the threads or uh, or any problems threading the new one in. Alright, that looks 
good. Go ahead and open up the new element. Place this seal onto the element here at the base of the threads. Now I've got to make sure that this is perfectly flat. Because if it gets twisted at all, that's going to leak and we'll have big problems. So that's nice and flat. I'm going to go ahead and carefully put that back in. And thread it very, very straight. I don't want to over tighten this because I can very easily strip these threads. But I want to get it about as tight as the old one was. Now before I connect these wires, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the drain is fully closed. and turn the cold water supply back on in order to test for any leaks. I need the pliers for that. I did close that pretty tightly. There we go. So far so good, no leaks. All right, I think we're good. Um, obviously I'll leave this uncovered for a little while, a few hours or so, just so I can come back and check and make sure that uh, there are no leaks. Uh, and if after a few hours there's no sign of water at all, then uh, I'll consider this a, a job done, wire it back up, cover it, and we're done. Alright, so it's been a couple hours, and uh, I don't see any evidence of leaking at all. So I can go ahead and wire this back up. Um, turn the power back on and we should have a fully functioning water heater once again. So yeah, that's a brief overview of how to change an electric water heater element. Yay! Hot water!